Lord, help us now as we sing. Help us to focus on you. Help us to hear from you this morning. Lord, I thank you that you love to meet with your people. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning for your amazing love. Love that lifts us. Love that saves us. Love that, love that means we can know you. Lord, we're so grateful. Yeah. 
beginning One with God the Lord most high You're here to glory in creation
song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more. Lord Jesus, we give you your your due worship, Lord Jesus, we love you. Why don't we just spend 30 seconds, we'll all pray out loud, just declaring God his glory. God, we worship you. God, we love you. We praise you for what you're doing. We love you. Thank you for the way that you're working. Thank you for the way that you're drawing people to yourself. Thank you that you're at work all over the world. We worship you, Jesus. We praise you. We lift your name up this morning. Thank you that you love each one of us individually. You want to know us. You want to work deep in our lives. Thank you for the ways that you're doing that already. We worship you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that we can do a thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more, and that still won't be enough. Lord, we worship you. We praise you for the ways that you're at work in our lives. We thank you for all you're doing all over the world, Lord. I thank you that you care so deeply about each person and you're involved in their life and you're working for them interceding for them even now jesus in heaven we thank you for the ways that you're at work thank you jesus thank you lord amen would you like to take a seat one two three one two three one two three four one two three four that's working I'm just going to pray for Chris as he comes up and also hope that he's not expecting that I've organized Bible readers because I haven't. (laughs) Okay, let's pray for Chris. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Chris. We thank you for all that you've been talking to him about. Lord, the way that you've been ministering to him um, through his experience of back pain. Lord, we thank you that you can work even through that. Lord, we pray for strength for him now, for healing for him now for hope and joy for him now. And we pray for the words that he's prepared, Lord. We just lift them to you. Lord, we thank you that you love to speak to us. Help us to have open hearts and ears to listen to you now, Lord Jesus, we pray. In your name, amen. 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 Um, Am I working? Can you hear me? Yep, good, good. Um, You never know, that might be a... Oh, okay, good. uh, Jill just made reference, reference then to back pain. Uh, just so you know, I've been away on holiday for a couple of weeks, and uh, in the second half of the second week, uh, maybe building one sandcastle too many, I strained something in my back. So if you, if you think I'm like leaning over, I'm not doing like one of those Michael Jackson impersonations. I'm, I'm, uh, there's, something, there's, something, there's something up with my muscles in me. So I am slightly kind of like a funny angle. Uh, if you're at home watching this on Zoom, don't try and adjust your set. It's, um, it's, not, it's, it's not wonky. I am. Uh, do you know, we, we, we Christians, we believe uh, in the fact that God can heal. And there have been a few people who have been praying that I would be healed, that, um, that the pain would go, and that, and, uh, that I'd be um, kind of like freed from uh, whatever's going on with my back. But um, do you know, that it's sad that that hasn't happened. But... Since, since this pain came, I'll tell you what has been really fantastic, is that I haven't kind of like felt a dent in my spirit at all. And I've not felt, I've not felt, I, I don't know if you've ever had a bad back. Um, maybe if you haven't had one yourself, you can talk to somebody else. I think one of the things that can happen is you just get, you just feel miserable because every position, you can't stay in this position, you can't stay in that position. You, you start to do that, you just, you, oh, you shift. And you keep feeling the pain, and actually, you can't be comfortable. And Annette, you're right. You do have to take it easy. And, and so, so I kind of like, I, th- I thought, oh, you know, this will this will get to me. But actually, I feel where God's really worked wonders this last week is actually I've not felt, I've not felt that dent. I, I've, not felt, I've not felt that bruising from, like, phys- physically, yes, but not emotionally, not spiritually. I felt like God's been... Uh, just kind of like carrying me through and um, yeah I, I do sometimes stand a bit funny at the moment but I feel like I am getting better um, but that's not the point of today's sermon the point of today's sermon is this word that is up on the board uh, the board that makes it sound like a sc- school lesson um, 
you'd like to take your exercise books and open them to page two. Um, mission, mission, and, and, and uh, I'd like to just think about this, not just today, but for the next month. I'd like to think about mission for a month because mission isn't a word that you can just whiz past and just do, do, in, a, do in a day. Mission, mission is, is that it's the great big kind of idea of what it is that we as CSK, we as like the broader church, and we as individuals are all trying to do. What is our purpose? The, the word mission, just bear with me, this, some people find this really interesting and some people find it really boring, but mission comes from an ancient Latin word, mito, mito, I send. So if I was a, if I was a big important person and I wanted to send somebody out, I would mito them. I would send them out and I might send them out for a purpose, like to do a job. I might send them out with a message. I might send them out to fulfill a post, like, a, like a, they might have a job as a, an officer in some land. But I, the, the official would be mitoed. They would be sent. And, and from that, we in English get the word mission. Someone is sent. And so the mission isn't the thing necessarily that you choose for yourself. It's the thing that you're given. Mission is the thing that you are sent out on. And there might be a collaboration there. You might agree to be being sent. But actually, it's God who sends us out on a mission. There's, there's a, like a load of references into the Bible. Uh, have you heard the phrase apostles? If you've heard the phrase apostles, the word apostle means sent. Somebody who is sent, the 12 apostles. And the, the idea that there is this apostolic church. We are an apostolic church. In the, in the nine o'clock service uh, that, that happened before the 1045 service, because that's how time works, in the nine o'clock service, they, they read out the, the creed. And, and, and I love reading it out. There's a bit near the end of it saying we are a holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. An apostolic church, meaning we are a church that is sent. Church that is sent. It's like, get out there. Get out there and do your mission. Do what you have been sent to do. So, mission is the thing that we have been sent to do. So, what is that? What is it that we have been sent to do? What is it that we have been sent to do? Now, just bear with me for a moment on this. Have any of you ever watched anything on TV? Okay, I thought that was a pretty safe question. Um, have you ever watched a movie and you get to the end of it? I, actually, this is, this is a little interesting thing to me. Have you noticed how long credits are getting at the end of films? Have you ever, like, have you ever looked to see, like, oh, how long is it left till the end of the film? 22 minutes. It's 22 minutes left to the end of the film, and then 10 minutes later, the film's over because there's 12 minutes of credits. And the credits, they just roll up and they roll up, and there's, there's production designers and additional crew and best boys and gaffers and video special effects people and animal handlers. If you ever, you, uh, do you know, it's, uh, it's quite interesting, actually. If you sit and watch, the number of people, and I, what I do for myself is I look out for my own name, and, and sometimes I catch my daughters go, Sarah, there's a Sarah. It's like, it's like yeah, it's exciting. Like, and actually, occasionally, there's a, there's a cameraman called Chris Owen. So, so it's like, yes, there he is. He's, he's filmed that thing. And I, and I don't know, um, keep an eye open. And I also spot other people's names. So I see, I see sometimes some of you. It's like, there they are. They made that film. Um, I, I don't actually spend my entire time sitting watching credits. But it struck me that when, when people get together to make a film, some of these, some of these big ones, there's like literally thousands of people involved in making them. And the thing is, is that all of those different people, they might play a small part or a really big part, but they all get together on one mission. There's one plan, one purpose. And, and you don't have like a thousand people and some of them are making a documentary and some of them are making a thriller and some of them are making a cookery program. No, 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 they, they all know the story. They all know their part in it. And in fact, with some of the really fancy films, they don't actually know all of the story. Sometimes they just know the bit they're working on. Sometimes they're keeping plot secrets under wraps. Actually, maybe, maybe the mission that God sends us on is sometimes like that as well. We have our part to play in the great big picture. 
We have our part to play. And so there's this kind of sense, though, that even though they may not know everything, they know what it is they are doing. They know what they're working on. They know their part in it. And, and actually, the people involved in those different things, they have different skills and gifts and abilities and passions and experiences that help them contribute their part in that great big mission. So the, so the special effects people, they don't try doing stunts. And the stunts people, they don't try doing makeup. And the makeup people don't try doing the electrical wiring. They all know, they all know their part in it. There's this great, amazing sense. And so, so next time you look out, next time you look out and you see a film, and you see there's a massive list of credits, think about not just the film, but about us. Imagine the credit sequence at the end of, at the end of, at the end of a year of the life of a church here in CSK or across the country, that all the different people who put in their part that really are electricians. I don't think we have a makeup crew. I think I'd look way better if I had a makeup crew. I probably need some special effects to make me look like I'm standing up straight. Um, th there's all these different parts, though. And actually, I think sometimes we don't even realize the things that we contribute individually to the life of a church. There was, there was somebody I knew in a, in a church in Bristol he just kept on, like the only thing he ever seemed to do was encourage people. He just kept on encouraging people and just kept on saying words of encouragement. And on any credits list, he might not even have appeared, but I would have put him there as the encourager, as encourager. Everybody can play their part in a big mission. So the question is then, what is that mission that we are all kind of contributing to, all joining in with, all, all getting stuck into? And um, there's, there's, there's one clue up on this screen, apart from the word mission. Um, actually, maybe there's two clues. I don't know. Um, what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the big one? It's, a, it's an aerial view of High Wycombe. It's an aerial view of High Wycombe. And um, I'm going to go over to this one over here. So oh, I can't even, I can't even like, reach up to point anymore because of my back. But we're up there somewhere in the middle of it. We're up there underneath the second S. And, you know, God has, God has given us the mission of, of being his church in this corner of this town. There's things that, that here that God has called us to do. So I think that's the, that's the big one. And there's a little subtle detail in there as well. And um, with, with a lot of the images we, we try and pop up on the screens at CSK, we, we try and include the little crown, the, like the little symbol for CSK, the Christ the servant king. He's called us to be here, living for him, and serving him. Now, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take us through just a few little bits about what mission is here. And I'm going to try and do it fast because um, my back hurts. Is that okay? Is that all right? Um, several years ago, the... Um, the Anglican Church, which is the Church of England is part of the Anglican Church, and CSK is part of the Church of England. The, the Church of England and the, the Anglican Church kind of worldwide got together and said, well, what, what, is, what is mission anyway? So it had, had one of those kind of like soul-searching sessions. What is mission anyway? What does it look like? How can you see it's happening? And, and they came up with this kind of like little catchphrase, the five marks of mission. The five marks of mission, uh, like a, I think maybe just kind of like referencing back to the idea that Jesus, when he was crucified, he crucified, he had marks on his hands and his feet and his side. The five marks of, of Jesus's crucifixion, the five marks of mission. What does mission look like? And, and they came up with a kind of like a catchy little list. And they had to come up with a catchy little list because the Bible and the Gospels is not normally about lists. The, the Bible is mostly about exciting stories. And so you go through the Gospels and they say a little bit here and a little bit there. And they, they do a bit of proclaiming in this bit. They do a bit of teaching in that bit. They do a bit of serving in that bit. There's a bit of transforming over here. And there's a bit of sustaining over there. And so that what, the, what the Anglican Church did was they said, well, let, let's put those into a nice lordly list so we can write them down. And we can put a little box next to each one of them so that we can check that we are doing them. Is that all right? That sounds very, that sounds very.
very Anglican church. But actually, however, however kind of like formal and, and slightly sort of, you know, kind of box checking that is, actually, it's, it's not the box checking that's important. It's this list of stuff that's incredible. And over the next five weeks, we're going to go look at proclaiming, teaching, serving, transforming, and sustaining. And what actually those words mean and what they refer to. They, they all kind of like come under the banner of the first one, which is, this is kind of like the headline story of Jesus' life, death, resurrection, the commission of the disciples. It's what Jesus like stood up at the beginning of his ministry and said, right, this is what I'm here to do. I'm here to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. And that's the first one of the five marks of mission. It's proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. It's proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. There's a beautiful, beautiful verse, which includes the word beautiful, so I shouldn't say it too many times, in Isaiah. This is, uh, this is written several hundred years before the time of Jesus. And it's kind of anticipating. It's anticipating the time when somebody comes who, who brings the good news. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who brings good news. The good news of peace and salvation. The news that the God of Israel reigns. The people of Israel have been longing, longing for this declaration of the good news. And Jesus came, and in, in the Gospel of Luke, this is kind of like Jesus' first kind of moment when he steps onto the scene, really, in, in a big way, in his hometown. Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Holy Spirit's power. Reports about him spread quickly through the whole region. He taught regularly in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. I hope you're getting the sense of excitement that's building here. I think Luke, when he wrote this, I think he was, I think he was excited as he got, got through this bit. A scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to Jesus. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. And Jesus read this out. Jesus stood there and read this out. I, I, I don't know, do scrolls go like that or do they like go like that? I don't know. I think, I don't know. Like that, you reckon? Yeah. This feels uncomfortable like that. Um, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he's, he's not saying this about somebody else. He's not saying this about Isaiah. Jesus is claiming this for himself and he's declaring it. For he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free. Oh, and I love this bit. And that the time of the Lord's favor has come. The time of the Lord's favor has come. And Jesus deliberately left out a bit from Isaiah about the day of judgment of the Lord. Jesus said, no, no, here in my presence, I'm not here to bring the day of judgment. I'm here to bring the day of the Lord's favor. I am to, here to enact a kingdom of justice and goodness and peace and hope. Oh, the good news. The good news is that God is good and loving and that he is not, he is not there waiting for you to slip up and punish you. God is yearning for you to succeed in every way. God is there to support you through everything. God's not, God's not watching you to see whether you do well or badly. God is, God is your biggest supporter. Did you know that? God is your biggest supporter. God is your biggest fan. God is your biggest encourager. God is the one. God is the one. He's your cheerleader on the sides, just so excited about your life and the things you're going to do. That's who God is. The year of the Lord's favor is being declared. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down. I think he had a microphone. He would have dropped it and maybe got a scowl from the tech team who don't like that sort of thing being done. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back, and sat down. Golly, that... How must that have felt? All eyes in the synagogue looked at him intently. And it went, the story goes on from there, actually. It's, 
quite complicated. Some people react with real kind of like opposition to this idea that Jesus is kind of basically claiming that he is, he is God's agent to enact God's kingdom here and now. So some people kind of react to that quite, quite profoundly. But Jesus starts his ministry with this powerful declaration. He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. I think of the current climate we're in now. We need a little bit of that. By the end of this winter, there's going to be a lot more poor people than at the beginning. We're into a rough and hard stage in this country, I think. We're in for a tough winter. But actually, like I know that even though I've got the pain in my back, I've got the good news of Jesus in my heart. Whatever pain and struggle and suffering we face, the good news remains good news. Whatever situation, whatever circumstance, whatever the world throws at us, the good news of Jesus is constantly the good news. And we're called to proclaim it. And it's, it's interesting. I think like words, words are interesting to me, maybe not to you. Words can be, um, words can mean all sorts of things. Proclaim generally means this, doesn't it? Proclaim. Um, it means speaking. The, the, the next mark, or not the next mark, mission, two, mission, two marks down is serve, which we're going to look at uh, in conjunction with Wickham Homeless Connection in a couple of weeks' time. Serve is about, is about not just saying it with words, but saying it with deeds. So that's part of the proclaiming there, because because you because also we proclaim it with our attitude as well. Like actually how we act towards people, we proclaim. So actually, if we're, if we're miserable towards people and horrible towards them, we're not proclaiming the good news, are we? Actually, we, we've got to let the hope of Jesus work in us. We've got to let the Holy Spirit come and live within us so that we live lives that, that aren't, aren't like crushed by depression or despair, but actually that the message of hope of Jesus comes bubbling through all of the stuff of the world so that we proclaim it, not just with the words we say, but with how we say those words. We proclaim it with the deeds we do. We proclaim it with the values we live by as well. Like actually, if the values we have are that we just take whatever we want whenever we can, and we exploit people left, right, and center, and we, we use stuff, and we use people, and we throw away the stuff, and we throw away the people. If we live like that, if we have values like that, that's not proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. We need to have values that are values that we cherish people. We cherish God's creation. So we don't just proclaim with our words. We proclaim with how we live. We proclaim with how we look slightly slanty uh, today. We proclaim, with, we proclaim with how we treat people. And that's it. Proclaim the good news of the kingdom. We encourage. We build up. We support. We strengthen. We develop. We equip. We collaborate. We look for God's inspiration and his creativity. We look for God's leadership in everything. And so that's, that's our mission. That's our mission. And, um, and like I said, the first point, which kind of like covers all of them, I'm just going to, I'm not going to do a test in six weeks' time. But that's the overarching kind of like mission of the church, to proclaim the good news of the kingdom and and how we do that, we will break down in the next few weeks. But I, I'd like to pray now for two things. Two things. First of all, that we actually know the good news. Because how can you share good news if you don't know it? For some of us, I think church actually is a, is a, is a chore or a weight or a tradition, or a duty. And it's kind of like, oh well. For some of, some of us, for some of us we've, we've had like the good news once. 
But actually, it's just slipped from our minds a little bit. Other stuff's crept in. All, all sorts of stuff can. We need to know the good news, and we need to know it now. If we want to proclaim it, we can't just like re read it out off a piece of paper. We need to know it afresh. And so my first prayer is that, that we will each know it afresh. We will know the good news. And know that the good news is also a person. The good news isn't a statement. The good news is Jesus, the living Lord. And then the second prayer I'm going to pray is that what we've received, we'll be able to give. So let's pray. Lord, you gave the good news straight to your disciples. They heard it fresh from your lips. They saw the good news in action as you touched the leper. As you met with the untouchables and the rejected, as you met with the broken, the outcast, as you met with the struggling. Father God, your apostles saw the good news in action. And they saw the ultimate validation of the good news, the ultimate vindication of it, when death couldn't hold you, that you broke the bounds of the grave. And they realized that death had been conquered, that sin had no hold on them. Father God, may we meet with your good news now. Lord God, you breathed your spirit into your disciples. May you breathe your spirit into us here today. Breathe the good news of the day of the Lord's favor. Breathe the good news of freedom from captivity. Father God, as you inspire us, lead us on in your mission. Lead us on in your ways. Lord, I think of those great credit sequences, those credit lists. Lord, may you show us our part in your mission. May you show us our name on your credits. And may you lead us on into your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to spend a bit of time thinking and responding to what we've heard this morning and maybe what God's already putting on your heart. We're going to do that with a song and then in a couple of other ways. Um, but through this time, feel free to sit or stand, um, make of this time um, what you would like. Um, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are on a mission. Lord, I thank you that we can be a part of that mission. Help us now as we think and pray and sing. Amen.
ever seen Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe
Lord, lead us in your love to those around us, we pray. Amen. We're going to continue thinking about God's mission by watching a video now. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with, is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, uh, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strive to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, we'd be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. Doesn't that look exciting? So, those of you who were prompt people and heard my question earlier, we're gonna to get to the answer of that shortly. So, there has been a piece of research done called the Talking Jesus Report that's just come out this summer and it's got all sorts of really interesting information in it. And basically, it's Alpha and an organization called Hope and a number of other organizations have kind of pulled together to do this piece of research to kind of see what the state of the church and the kind of view of the church is in the UK. So this is how I know the answer to the question that I posed at the beginning. But before I tell you the answer to that one, did you know that most people outside the church describe Christians, the top thing they describe us as is friendly? It's good, isn't it? Yeah, friendly. And then the second one is caring. And you'll laugh at this one. The third one is good sense of humor. So there you go. Do you know, sometimes um, I think we think that that's not how the world sees us. So it's really good to know that that is how the world sees us. Now, the question that I asked um, you to think about was, what do you think the question that most people are asking outside the church right now is. Does anybody want to shout out an answer? Do you come up with anything exciting? Rising cost of living. Yeah, massive questions around that right now. Anyone else? What is this all about? Yes, Elena, I'm sure that's quite hard on the list as well. Anyone else? Why is it so hard going at the moment? No, you're right. And actually, the question that most people in the UK are asking right now is, 
is everything going to be okay? So actually, that, is, that picks up on, on everything you've said, actually. Is everything going to be okay? My final stat from this report. If you want more details about the report, come and ask me afterwards. But if my final stat is that one in three people outside church, after having a conversation with a Christian, want to have another conversation about Jesus. Isn't that exciting? So in 2019, they asked the same question, it was one in five. But now, because of everything that's happened, all of the things that have gone on in the world, actually one in three people outside of the church, having talked to a Christian, want to know more about Jesus. Isn't that really exciting? So guess what I'm going to tell you about now? Alpha, yeah, excellent. So, lovely team at the back. Do you know where these are? So, I've got, I've got three jobs, and one of them involves lots of these. So these are invitations to Alpha. We're going to be running Alpha here in the evening on Mondays, and in the daytime in the morning on Thursdays through October and November. So it starts on Monday the 3rd of October, half past seven, and Thursday the 6th of October at 10. Okay. All of the details are on here. Now, this is like a very important first edition because it's, it's you know how first editions sometimes have little marks on and then they fix them for the second edition? <laughs> this has got a typo on it. <laughs> I know. So you can get one and go, well, actually, Jill asked me to change because one of the dates is wrong. It says the second on here. No, not the second. The third. Monday is the third of October. So team at the back, can you find these? And anybody who wants one, I'd love you to take one of these. Angelina, Ex she's, she's off. Make, make use of the slaves that you've brought with you, Angelina. <laughs> she put her hand up. Go on, you can do it. Anybody wants? So I'm going to pray in a bit for you to think about who you might want to give this to. It's very exciting. But also, there's two bits of white paper that were on your table, Angelina. Can you see them? Can you just walk them very stylishly to the front? Angelina didn't realize that. Walk round for me, Angelina. Come round. Come round. Come round. She's ever so shy. You know, give Angelina a clap. She didn't know she'd signed up for this. So there are two pieces of paper. There's one that's portrait, and there's one that's landscape. I know, I know, not just thrown to, just thrown together, not just thrown together this. So the one that is portrait, that is the one. If you'd like to sign up for Alpha, please do. It will be so encouraging to me and the people who've already offered to be on the team to know that we've already got people coming. If you could have been in church your whole life and still want to ask more questions, because actually we're all a bit like that, or you could want to bring someone with you, it's great to say, do you want to come on this thing with me? Um, rather than saying, oh, there's this thing happening, you might want to go, but I don't want to. It's less appealing. Okay, so if you'd like to sign up for Alpha, the portrait one is the one that you want. If you would like to help with Alpha, the landscape one is, you'll notice because it says, what role would you like to do on it? Um, and if you would love to support and join in in any way, so there's that we need tech support. We've already got a bunch of lovely people offering to do refreshments, so I'm excited about the possibility of cake. This sounds really good. Um, we need people to help welcome. We need people to pray. If you can't come for whatever reason, but you want to have prayer requests about Alpha sent to you, we're going to organize that as well. So we would love you to pray. So, or if you think of the thing that I have forgotten, if you are that person, please write down, I'll be the person who thinks of the things that Jill has forgotten. That'd be excellent. We all need those people. So thank you, Angelina. Give Angelina a clap. Those are going to be at the back of church. Please do put your name on them. It will really, really encourage me. I'm going to pray now. I would love you to think about who you might invite to go to Alpha. Do you know, when, when I said um, one in three people, who've had a conversation about Jesus with somebody from church want another one. That made me think of, you might be praying for some of your friends. Hands up if you pray regularly for your friends to come to know Jesus. Hands up if you pray for more than three. All you, all you people with your hands still up, one of those people, one of those people wants to know more about Jesus. Statistically, 
Isn't that cool? So let's pray now and ask God to just drop those names in our heads or to give us the boldness to sign up ourselves. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Alpha. We thank you for this opportunity. And we just pray that even now, you will be putting the names of people on our hearts who we could invite to Alpha. Lord, if it's people who would rather do daytime, Lord, we pray that we, they will be able to come on that Thursday course. And Lord, we pray that the Monday course would also be full of people wanting to know more about you. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you so much for what you're doing, the way you're calling and drawing people. We thank you for the encouragement of that report that actually people do want to have conversations about you, Lord. People are interested. Help us to overcome our, our nervousness. Give us a boldness to talk to people about you, to talk to our friends and to invite them along. And Lord, we pray for people to support and encourage Alpha in all sorts of different ways. Like Chris said before, the makeup artists don't do the electric wiring. Lord, thank you that you've given us all gifts and talents. And I pray that you would show us if you're calling us to use them as part of the Alpha course. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everybody. We're just going to sing one more song. Um, oh, excellent. We're going to sing, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Would you like to stand? Shall we stand together as we sing?
Lord Jesus, we praise you again for your amazing love. Lord, we thank you that that love is too good to keep just to ourselves, that we want to share it with everybody. Lord, help us to be brave as we seek to do that this week in loads of different ways. We pray for anybody going back to school this week, into a new job. We pray a particular blessing for anybody starting anything new this week. Would you go and tell of God's amazing love wherever you are? And so go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Do sign up for Alpha. Do pick up Alpha invitations. If you weren't here and you don't know about the barbecue at Andy and Allison's, go and talk to them immediately. It's very important. And have a great week. God bless everybody.